Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the James D. Julia Auction House up in Maine, checking out some of the guns that are coming up for sale in their March 2015 auction. Now, broom handle Mausers are one of those areas of collecting that you can become totally subsumed in all sorts of little tiny subtle details. And what I try to look at instead are some of the, the more significant mechanical variations in guns. And for that reason, this particular C96 Mauser really jumped out at me when I noticed that it was here. Um, so early on, when, when Mauser first released the pistol, they were really hoping for military contracts. And they sent them to a bunch of different countries for evaluation, and the results, frankly, were a bit disappointing. Um, they didn't really get any major contracts. Uh, even the German army never did officially adopt this pistol um, as a standard sidearm. They were used as backup gun, as uh, substitute guns in World War I. But early on, Mauser was really hoping for something like a big German military contract. Um, by 1902, they'd gotten a couple small ones. Uh, the biggest contract they'd gotten was a sale of 5,000 guns to Turkey. And then there was a small sale to Persia, or Iran, we'd call it today. Um, a couple other little small sales. But it, you know, once it became clear that some of these major military contracts weren't forthcoming, Mauser started to look a lot more seriously at the commercial market. And frankly, ultimately, that's what really made the C96 a very, very popular and successful pistol, was commercial sales. Uh, one of the potential issues with the standard, kind of typical C96 as we would think about it today, is it was a big and bulky gun. So one of the experiments they did was to try and make some versions that were a little bit lighter, a little bit smaller, and a little bit handier to carry. And this, Model 1902, is an example of that. Now, 1902s, this is right at the end of their experimentation phase. It wasn't long after this that they pretty much standardized on uh, the, the version that we typically recognize today. But this one in particular has some really funky systems to it, most notably the safety. So why don't I bring the camera back here and let's take a closer look at what that safety is and how it works. First off, you'll note that, of course, we have a six-round magazine. This is, in general, a little bit lighter, a little bit smaller. The idea here was to try and create a pistol that would be a little more conducive to actual personal carry, uh, more so than what became the standard model of the broom handle Mauser. Now, the safety here is an experiment towards that end that just didn't end up very well. So let's take a look at how the safety actually functions on this pistol. I have it right now in the typical carry position. So the safety is engaged. The safety lever is forward. The hammer is cocked. If you were to go and pull the trigger, nothing stops the hammer from falling. However, the safety does stop the hammer from actually contacting the firing pin. You can see that the hammer has this little tab on the left that hits the safety, which stops it. The firing pin is down there underneath, not in contact. So it's a very effective positive safety. It certainly works. It's not going to malfunction. It's probably the sort of thing that would give a lawyer today a, you know, a coronary, but it did work. Um, and that's not the problem uh, with this mechanism. The problem was the complexity of use and one or two other elements that we'll get to in just a moment. So, in order to actually render the gun ready to fire, what you would do is cock the hammer, which, by the way, if the safety is engaged and the hammer is forward, you can cock the hammer using that tab on the safety. The next thing you would do in order to render the gun ready to shoot is you have to move this safety out of the way. As you can see here, the hammer is still going to be hitting the safety, the safety tab. So what we do is push down drop the hammer forward just slightly. Now, you can see the hammer just clears the safety and it can engage the firing pin and fire the gun. In order to engage the safety, what you would have to do is cock the hammer and then you pull this tab down, which brings, there we go, Tab down and push the whole assembly forward slightly. Now, you can push the safety forward and it's in position to block the hammer. So part of the problem with this was just kind of the, the complexity and the weirdness of operating this safety. It was something that could be done one-handed once you got used to it. But part of the problem here is in order to fire the gun, the safety has to be in this position and there's almost no way to avoid that getting pretty deep down into your hand and biting the snot out of you every time you fire. In fact, that was probably the main 
problem with this safety is it was just downright uncomfortable to use because of this thumb tab extension. Um, for that reason, these were used experimentally but never went into production. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you'd like to add this seriously funky and extremely rare Mauser to your own collection, you have the opportunity to do so coming up shortly. This will be for sale in Julia's March 2015 auction. It's lot number 2204. If you click the link right below in the description, you can uh, jump over to the Julia catalog, take a look at their high-res pictures of this pistol, uh, read their description of it, and uh, if you decide it's something that you just can't live without, you can have all the information there to place a, a bid online or come down here in person and participate live in the auction. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.